Hello everyone. Welcome back to another Vital Art session. It's Kelly Folsom here. And in today's session, we are going to be learning, studying how to paint this wooden box. Um, of course, I've put in some other elements for you so that you can turn your painting into uh, more of a work of art. Okay, so let's get started. Hey, hello everybody. Today we are painting this wonderful old wooden box. And um, so I thought that would be interesting and something different from what we have painted before. So we'll see how far we can get with this today. Um, I've gone ahead and drawn it in. This over here, obviously you can see has some red oxide um, and the rest of it is burnt umber and raw umber sort of intermixed back there to get my shadow value for the background. Um, and then this is just the tone with the red oxide and a little bit of blue. So I've got my drawing in place here. I've, I've got the shadow shape in here for you on the, the peach as well. Um, might actually pull out. There's a little piece of light on the other side of that cleft. Um, and so, but the primary focus is going to be on the box. So however far else I can get with this in the time allowed, we'll see. Um, boxes are probably the hardest thing to draw. It's the first thing that they start us off with in art school um, because um, of getting the perspective correct. So what you wanna do is measure um, visually from here to here and compare that distance of course here to here. So we're obviously seeing more of the front of the box and less of the top and less of the side. Um, these lines here, here and here, they are neither exactly parallel and far worse would be to have them moving away from each other. Same thing with these lines here. So. Um, anyway, so really looking to see where does this corner line up with the back of the box? What kind of negative shape does that leave me with here on the box? Things like that can really help you like this back corner, like these corners are never going to line up, um, never <laughs> visually just because of perspective, the optical illusion with perspective for us. So. You, you know that that's going to be the case. And depending on how high above you're sitting from the box, um, it will dictate how much of the top of the box you're going to be seeing. If you're really standing up, then maybe you're seeing mostly the top of the box. But in this case, I'm seeing primarily this head on and then this plane is receding back into space. Um, same thing here and here, eventually, these two lines would eventually cross um, in the in the distance in the horizon. Okay, and then these two here, these two can be you know somewhat more parallel. It's not quite as sharp of an angle as say this, this, or this, this to this. Um, so make sure that you measure those distances. Drop visual. You can use a skewer if you want to, but drop visual lines for yourself, like this back corner, where would that end on the front of the box to try to get your um, perspective correct. Okay, and then this side of the box is um, in shadow. Top plane is in light here. And today in order, since those planes on a box are not as smooth and round as say on a peach, in order to really get those nice plane changes, I'm going to use this um, uh, Jack Richardson, just a synthetic bright or flat would work. This is a number six, but um, these are really great for plein air too, by the way, because they don't quite reflect as much light off of the ferrule. So anyways, this will lay down a good amount of paint as well and give me some, some of those sharper edges than say a, a rounded filbert might. Okay. So I would say the local color of this wooden box, it's a beautiful sort of sienna 
red, something in that burnt sienna or a red oxide um, would really be nice. So I'm going to start off with some red oxide, maybe a little touch of alizarin um, already on this back side to get it a little bit richer. This front edge, remember everything closer to us always gets more um, sharper edges, more detail, more contrast. And we have cast shadow on the tabletop plane. Let's maybe neutralize. I'm going to add in a little bit more of the yeah, yellow deep and um, a little bit of blue just to neutralize that. That's less colorful than say the um, actual shadow on the box. So just to have a slight variation in the color, although the values are somewhat similar. Um, so the cast shadow is always related to the thing that it's casting on. So whatever the local color of the tabletop plane is. Um, okay, so then in the light, We'll do some of that red oxide as well again, but this time since it's totally transparent, that pigment is totally transparent, transparent red oxide. We're going to throw a little bit of white into it. We're just going to start by putting in some local color. Um, you can turn the brush on the side to try to create a sharper edge. For right now, I'm not too concerned about getting everything super sharp and clean just yet that can all get cleaned up and sharpen, sharpened up as I go. And um, more detail as I go. And we have these all kinds of details on this box. <laughs> but we want to make sure that we start off getting enough of the basic information in before we do like the brackets and the little gold buttons which will be fun. Okay. So one thing I want to make sure of, even though there's variation, is that I'm going to try to keep, <laughs> try being the key word. I, I can't have this whole plane jumping too much around in value. So I'm going to try to make sure that it doesn't get too choppy. And so I may have to lose some of the, you know, the little handle thing that I already painted in and all of that. So I may have to lose some of that at the moment to try to get a cleaner, bigger shape. Yeah. Okay. Good. So you can bring in those color variations and whatnot as long as you don't break the value here too much, as long as the shape still maintains its integrity. Now, along the very edge, you know, that might be where you're going to get a little bit of a cooler light and, you know, a sharper light. So. And again, I don't want it to be too, too much the same, too, too exact all the way across, but something that's a little bit cooler, a little bit lighter along that sharp edge. So I started off with some cab red light and white, and then I actually just took some of this shadow color from the tabletop plane to get sort of a grayish white for this edge of the box here. You can also, you know, if you don't quite get that edge just exact, you can always use your knife to kind of push a piece of paint up and sharpen it up a bit. Okay, and then I want to get in some background color for context, especially for those um, eucalyptus leaves that are going to wind up there. Um, I'm going to try just some burnt umber with white at first and medium. See where that gets me. It's feeling, you know, maybe a touch gray, uh, maybe a touch too gray. So I'm going to add a little bit of red and cab yellow deep. You know, the white really cools off colors a lot. And mostly I need a little bit darker on this side. 
over here because those eucalyptus leaves are going to be on top. And then I actually want to transition to a lighter color over here. It's maybe much more white and it's almost the same value as what's there in the underpainting color. Um, much more white, but still some of that neutral mix maybe leaves some of that uh, underpainting color showing through. Can possibly lose a little bit of an edge here. Okay, okay. Um, and I'm using my softer hair brush in this case just to kind of keep it sort of well, softer and more, more diffused at the moment. Um, okay, so this cast shadow, you want that to start right off the corner and you do want a little bit sharper edge on that. So one thing that's always helpful, of course, is to go back in and reinforce some darks on those shadows. So I'm going to take some ivory black, uh, red oxide, alizarin crimson, and let's make sure that all this box sits down. Again, it doesn't have to be a perfect line. Thank goodness. It's uh, kind of better if it's not. You, you want it to be there to serve its purpose, but um, you don't want it to get too much attention. And then this cast shadow is pretty deep um, underneath the, uh, the uh, peach there. And I see now I actually moved the peach as an overlap in front of the box and the painting <laughs> from where I'm sitting. So I'm going to change that right quick. You don't necessarily have to change it, but um, if it's a small, simple change, I would go ahead and do it just so that you can better judge your um, spacing and your drawing and all of that. So. Okay, so we also have a, a really beautiful edge here where that lid is. I, I feel like that's important to get in. That's um, kind of a, a good detail there. I'm going to start with um, some ivory black and raw umber. I'm going to put a little bit of white in that. So it's a dark value, but it's still um, getting some light on it, if that makes sense. So you can have a darker value, but still you want to identify is that light or is that shadow. So if it's in the light, then you know you want to make sure that it has enough lit up opacity involved instead of just straight up black. But just because it has a little pinch of white in it doesn't mean that it can't still function as a dark value. Um, and then we do have sort of some intricate little cast shadows here behind the latch. So that's where you would want to maybe go warmer and more darker and transparent with the oxide again and the black. And on this opposite side, just a skinny little cast shadow there. It's nice too is as this cast shadow sort of crawls away from the object that's casting it, it does get a little bit lighter, but that's going to be an interesting little moment in the painting. So never underestimate cast shadows. They really can add so much dimension so much more illusion of depth and dimension to your um, painting. Just like form shadows. I actually think cast shadows are a little bit more fun. I don't know why. 
like, ha ha, I'm blocking the light from you. Okay, so kind of that same mixture with the raw umber. This is certainly one of those things that it's like the little things that you observe make a world of difference <laughs> in something like this. Um, so the fact that let's say these brackets are more foreshortened, they're also more on the lit plane and the dusty plane, so they're a little bit lighter. But try to simplify the shape. It's really kind of a small little triangle there. Try not to think about, you know, try not to name the thing or think about what is that? You know, just try to observe closely and think about, oh, okay, that's a triangle shape in this color. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then we really don't see this back one because there's a eucalyptus overlapping. And I need to kind of wipe away some of that paint for where that eucalyptus is going to be. Same thing up here and here. And sometimes what I like to do is just use part of the back of my uh, brush handle to sort of carve in, figure out perhaps where some placement is. Okay. So as you can see, things are starting to perhaps look alive and more interesting. So now um, the difference between a peach is just a little side note for you. Peaches and let's say nectarines, something like that. A peach is going to have much more white in the mixture than um, generally than just like a pure cadmium. So you're going to definitely have some white in this mixture just to get, it's a softer look. It's not as reflective. It's also just not as um, vibrant of a color. So as say like a lemon. So you definitely don't want to just paint it with straight pure lemon and lemon yellow in my opinion. Um, but getting in some of that color will also help balance out all of these middle tones. You know, the wood is really a middle tone. So, you know, it's a kind of a middle value, middle to darker value. Um, so you definitely want to have enough other lighter values in the painting somewhere else in order to make the painting uh, hold together or be more interesting. And then this, of course, kind of goes back to our lesson on the not overblended color and the two toned objects here. So it's kind of painting some of that pure red in there for the peach. Um, perhaps even doing a little bit of that alizarin and red into the shadow. There's so, there's so many neutrals in this painting with the wooden box. So I felt like the, um, the little bit of color, even though it's kind of softer color in comparison to some other, some citrus fruits, but that little bit of color would really do the trick to keep it being an interesting looking painting. Okay. But, um, can't really spend too much time here. Um, you're also, you also won't really have a super strong, distinct highlight on a peach. So just so you know, just kind of a little softer looking. Um, okay. So back to this, I'm going to switch back to that palette knife again. because we've got another, just like up here, we've got another little sharp edge. Now, when you're mixing with your palette knife, once you get the color that you want, if, you, if you're really needing a sharp enough edge, once you get the color you're looking for, whatever that may be, <laughs> dear ones, <laughs> uh, 
if you're mixing with a knife, it's going to be all over the tip. So then you want to wipe it. And then what I do is just kind of drag and pull so that that paint is just on the very edge of the knife. Again, I try to kind of change the mixture here. And once more, we don't want like too much of a uh, perfect looking, oh damn. Okay, well, in that case, <laughs> that's, that's called a do-over, y'all. Just so you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, do over. You get as many do overs as you need. <laughs> so, that was just looking a little too precise or too, too much the same. So, I was trying to fix that, but instead made it worse. Okay. Um, all right. And then. You're going to also have these little ridges of highlight. Um, all along the top. All the edges of these pieces of metal. You, you can really see it here. And this is certainly a thing of less is more. And power of suggestion. So make sure that you kind of stand back from your painting from time to time. Just to be sure that you're not overdoing it, which can happen pretty quickly uh, for me. So, um, okay. So what might really be fun Oh, let me get some more umber in here because that's kind of too warm. Needs to be a little bit more solid. This edge, a little bit sharper and cleaner. Well, this one's kind of cool. It's got a little carving out for a little design, which I am not going to be able to deal with, but you are more than welcome to. Oh, okay. You talked me into it. We'll kind of at least scrape out a little bit. Okay. Do, do, do. Um, and see how that kind of carried over a little too far. Let's try to fix that up. And you know, this is really kind of the darkest edge here. Maybe coming back in, trying to get that a little bit more intense. Um, all right. So these little brass buttons, oh, you little boogers. Okay. But they're really fun. So let's see if we can uh, have some fun with those. Um, so remembering that brass is more in the yellows. Um, actually, burnt umber, cad yellow light or cadmium lemon is a great sort of olivey green tone. Most of the, oh my goodness, these are so little. <laughs> okay, these little buttons. I wish this was a bigger painting. All right, so little dot, 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 dot. Okay, and then what you have to have, of course, of course, always, is a nice little piece of highlight on those brass buttons whatever these things are called. Maybe not. I don't know if we need, do we need every single one? I'm not sure. 
Uh, okay, so as you can see, that's helping the cause, I think. <laughs> Definitely giving some more character and distinct quality to this little wooden box. Um, the other fun piece, again, like I was saying earlier, these little small details that really kind of help. These little cast shadows underneath the buttons. It's funny looking at like some of Sargent's paintings or even Rembrandt's paintings and I swear they were having more fun painting the, the gold buttons than they were the portrait, you know. So they were just so perfectly painted. <laughs> oh, and painted with such um, simplicity and sort of bravura. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do here is put in a few of the eucalyptus leaves. Well, actually, before I do that, um, I'm, what I'm going to try to do is pull in some more light. That's not a great color. Let's try a reddish, more reddish tone with some more white. See if I can't pop out this handle a little bit more and actually that might do the trick to kind of start livening up the paint quality. Get some more variation in the brushwork as well. Still a little too dark. But this cast shadow in between the latch and using the light on the box to try to carve out the latch a little bit stronger. Okay, that's a little better. to try to get a little more dimension. I feel like this, the value of this could be a little bit lighter. You can also kind of use this brush to kind of drag back in. You know, if you push this way, you're actually pulling paint off and that can start to create uh, maybe a textural, a little more textural look to the wood. And again, we have a lot more coolness on top here. Oh, maybe not that much. <laughs> oh, mercy. You've gone too far. But definitely a stronger coolness on that top edge of that box. You know, that's that top plane. Not only does it gather dust, which kind of adds some of that dusty coolness to it, but it also, uh, also, yeah, it also um, catches more light on that top plane. Okay, and then just to try to start blocking in some of these eucalyptus leaves. I'm not going to have too much time to agonize over their color, but um, since this painting is so colorless, you might make them a tad bit colorful. When they get dried out, they do lose some of their color, so keep that in mind as well, you know. We don't necessarily want to paint the drabest painting around, right? So that'll start to kind of pull in some of 
that light for those leaves as well. Um, one thing I just hate to leave out would be this beautiful value of the cast shadow of some of the leaves on top of the box and also coming off on top of the box from the eucalyptus leaf. So some sort of cast shadow there. Which means I kind of can't leave out this one here, even though it's not really in full light. So I'm still feeling like this edge, that very front edge of the box. I wish it was reading stronger. As my grandma says, no, I'm not going to say what she says. <laughs> Anyways, you know what they say about wishing. So we got to make it happen here or attempt to make it happen. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for being here and happy painting to you.